Now let's hop right into it and check out these nickels from the 1970s that are worth money. Okay, so this first nickel here is a 1970D mint mark. Now the coin has been double struck and the second strike being 45% off center. Now this coin actually does look, you know, similar to a damaged coin. However, it's not. It's actually a mint error. We can see here on the reverse, it really shows it. You see the design there twice. Uh, from the bottom of the coin as a result of the error. And this nickel here sold for over $350. Moving on to a 1971. Now this coin here has also been double struck. And you can see that here on the obverse of the coin. Very, very awesome type of error. I love unique errors like this that look really like, this one looks really cool. So I would love to have something like this in my collection. Now this coin here sold for over $4 hundred dollars moving on now this one is very confusing to some people this is a 1971 now it is supposed to have an s mint mark so here's an example of a no s on the right and an s mint mark on the left now this is only for the proof nickel. This is not for the regular 1971 business strike nickel that you would typically find in your pocket change or in coin rolls from the bank. So if you're not familiar with proof coins versus business strike coins, I have a whole video on that. Be sure to go check it out. Just search proof coins, couch collectibles here on YouTube. Now, this coin is very, very valuable. It's supposed to have the S mint mark. It does not have the S mint mark. And it's also in, you know, very, very good condition. Almost a perfect grade. Now, if you're not familiar with coin grading, I have a whole video on that as well. This is graded at a proof 69 deep cameo. And you can see it says no S there on the coin slab. Now, this coin here sold for over $7,000. 7,000 US dollars. So the proof coin is typically going to have that mirror-like finish and be very shiny and detailed in comparison to the regular 1971 nickel. Now if we look at this 1973 nickel, this is super cool. This is a 1973D Jefferson nickel that was struck on a Philippine 5 centimos blank Planchet. So it was actually struck on what was supposed to be a Philippine coin, and that's why it's got that goldish like color to it. But this error coin here did sell for over $450. Moving on, now this quarter here sold for a little over $30. So not an expensive coin, but you can see that it's definitely, you know, misaligned. So we can see how we got that thick. Uh, edge there on the coin around the rim of the coin. So that is a uh, pretty awesome Definitely always be on the lookout for these in your pocket change next up is a 1974 Denver minted nickel now this was struck on a split Planchet so we see the result of that here in the images displayed looks like it's really worn down or filed down or something But it is actually a mint error now this nickel here sold for over $200 now this next one is really cool. This is something that you can always look out for and it is a 1975 Jefferson nickel that has a misplaced mint mark. So we see the mint mark over here on the left side and then we go to this right side and you can see the mint mark is almost touching the five. So it is a misplaced mint mark, the D mint mark there. Now here is an example of that D mint mark being really, really close to the five. It is not supposed to be that close. So always be on the lookout for that. I have USB coin microscopes available on couchcollectibles.com. Link is always in the description of every video. Now let's move on to a 1975 Jefferson nickel that has that misplaced mint mark and it's got a cud taking place on the coin. Now you see the misplaced mint mark here, bam. See the cud here on the left, the die break. So that is pretty awesome as well. I've actually found the cud nickel before. That was really exciting, but I've not found the 1975 misplaced mint mark. Now this coin here sold for over $1,000 as is on eBay. So not even a graded coin and still $1,000. Now if we move on, here is a similar coin that we looked at. Uh, before it's just a 1976 Jefferson nickel that was struck on a Philippine coin planchet and because of that error this coin sold for over $800 800 bucks 
Moving on to a 1977 Jefferson nickel. Now I love these types of errors. So this coin was actually struck on a one cent coin, a Lincoln penny. Now you can actually see the design of the Lincoln Memorial there going through Jefferson's face. And then here on the reverse, we see that error taking place as well. Now this coin here sold for over $300. Next up is a very unique coin. Now this is, well, I don't know if you want to call it a coin. Uh, it's more like a washer. So it's a, wait, am I saying it right? Washer or washer? Let me know how you pronounce it. Washer or washer? Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna say washer. Now this coin is the 1979 Jefferson nickel. Well, it was supposed to be, but it was actually struck on a steel washer. I have no idea how this gets out into circulation. You can see it's got the hole in the middle, uh, just like a washer would. And this coin sold for over $4,000. 4,000 US dollars. Next up is a 1972. Now this is the S mint mark. So it is the proof coin. This is what is known as a uniface reverse. So we can see that we see the reverse here. It looks pretty normal on this side of the coin, right? But on the obverse of the coin, we are missing the whole obverse design as a result of the error taking place on this nickel. Now this nickel nearly sold for $1,000, over $990 for this coin. Now check out these other nickels that you should always be on the lookout for in your pocket change or in coin rolls from the bank. We're going to talk about everything for the 1942 and what to look for on these nickels. So first, if you have a 1942 D, a D mint mark, now this is the non-silver nickel here. The D mint mark will be on the back to the right of the building. You can see there on the reverse of the coin. Now if you want to see your D mint marks up close like this, I do have coin microscopes available on couchcollectibles.com. Link is down in the comments below. What this error is called a D over a horizontal D mint mark. So the first D mint mark that they put on here was rotated 90 degrees and it made it a horizontal D. When they re-stamped the D on there the right way, it is a D over a horizontal D. Now here is that coin that actually has a D over a horizontal D on the 1942 nickel and this one here does have a high grade of a mint state 64 so it's in very very good condition which will give it a lot of value as well this nickel here sold for over thirty two thousand dollars so keep in mind if you have a d over a horizontal d and your coins all damaged and scratched up it's definitely not going to sell for thirty two thousand but it still will have a little bit of value Next up, what you always want to look for is doubling on the coin. So doubling you see there on the nose. So you see the doubling there on Jefferson's nose. And we see it here on the lettering and on the date 1942 itself. So get you a coin microscope so you can see your coins up close like this. And check and see if you have any doubling on your 1942 Jefferson nickels because it can give your coins some value. Alright, so first up here is a regular 1942 Jefferson nickel. It is a non-silver Jefferson nickel. This one does not have a mint mark at all. That means that it was made in Philadelphia. Now on this coin, they actually produced 49 million of these coins. Now there's another non-silver that is the 1942D and they produced a little over 13 million of those. That's the one where we have the D next to the building on the reverse of the coin. Now in 1942 they also produced silver nickels. Now if you want to know if your coin is silver, here's an example of that. You will see a mint mark above the building on the back of the coin. So in 1942 silvers will have the P and S mint marks on the back of the building. There is no 1942D that is silver, only the P and S for the year of 1942. So you see that big mint mark there, that means that coin is 35% silver. Now next up, this is something that a lot of people don't know about. This one here is very, very interesting. If we look at the reverse of this coin, you see that there's no mint mark on the top of the building. However, this one looks silver and that's because it is silver, but it's not supposed to be silver. This is supposed to be a regular 1942 Jefferson nickel. 
non-silver. It's supposed to be a non-silver coin. However, this was actually struck on a silver planchet and it weighs 4.7 grams. So if you find a nickel that looks silver like this and it doesn't have that big mint mark on the back above the building, then you may have an error coin like this. Now this coin here sold for over $9,900. Now here, I got my nickel book out right here, guys, and you can see all of my silver. You see, that one is a very, very nice condition. Brian Hooper sent me that. That is a very, very awesome coin. A 1945D, you see the big D mint mark? And see the big S mint mark above the building? All right, so let's go to 1942. Here is Whoa, why don't I have a regular 1942? Hopefully it didn't fall out. All right, I'm not sure why I don't have a 1942 in there, guys. Maybe I might have misplaced that, but I know I definitely have one of those. Here's a 1942D, it is not silver, but this one, 1942P with the P mint mark there at the top, that is silver. So we'll see the D mint mark for this one here on the reverse it's actually right next to the building it's actually right next to the building like i said kind of hard to see on this one but all of those silver ones will have that mint mark see that d above the building bam all right guys don't forget to subscribe in the middle check out the videos to the left of me and until tomorrow i will see you all in the comment section below this is couch collectibles and this is where i disappear